Welcome back to Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin. We're back in beautiful Natchez, Mississippi, and I have a treat for you today, as I always say. Now, you want to watch a architectural historian like myself just completely geek out over a place? Bring her to a place like this. Today, we're at the Cedars Plantation. Welcome back to Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin. Today, we're in the Church Hill District right outside of Natchez, Mississippi. Church Hill is a community that is one of the most intact pre-Civil War communities that exists in the Southeast. There are a multitude of homes, there's a general store, several churches. It really is like stepping back in time. And we're so excited to be bringing you a tour of the Cedars Plantation. This is an architectural history channel. We're here to teach you about incredible architectural history. And as an architectural historian, I want you to learn to appreciate the beauty that is represented in these structures through the evolution of building in our American culture. And in these structures, we see that evolution and we're very fortunate to have so many of them still standing both in the North and the South. And we just happen to live in the South, so that's where we bring you. And today, we're bringing you the Cedars Plantation. Now, if you wanna see an architectural historian completely geek out over a property, bring me someplace like this. The Cedars is a property that has evolved over time. It was started in 1830, but then had increasingly grand changes made to it in the decades immediately following its construction. So it was started in 1830 by Colonel James Wood for his daughter, Mary Shields. And all it was at the beginning was a very simple vernacular farmhouse. It did not have this beautiful gallery portico that we see here. All it was was this simple lap clapboard siding, gorgeous 12 over 12 windows, and vernacular construction. What do we mean when we say vernacular construction? What that means is it really doesn't fit into any particular defined style. This is a period 1830 when we could have had federal, we could have had colonial, but instead the builder of this structure took the elements that they liked from all of the popular design styles and they put it into this single space. The beautiful gallery porch was added in 1840 and then monumental changes occurred over time. But let's go into the oldest period of the house and see what it started as. Come on inside. Welcome into the Cedars original hall from 1830. You can see this is the central hall and the doorway behind me was originally the back of the home. So this was a very simple, very modest farmhouse when it started its life. Here we have the fluted architrave and entablature and I absolutely love these doors. The downstairs original portion of the home has very distinctive doors. You'll see these six over two raised panel doors. This is one of the only places I've seen this particular style of door and they're absolutely magnificent. They all have their original tiny little brass knobs. So let's go into what is the first bedroom and I'll show you something that I just love in here.
Here we are in what would have originally been the family's parlor. You can see by the ornate mantelpiece that is original, this would have been the main living space for the family. You'll note in this room a complete lack of architectural ornamentation. There is no plaster work. There is no ceiling medallion. You have very, very simple door surrounds. You have very simple woodwork throughout the room. Again, these beautiful doors, but they were used throughout the house and your 12 over 12 light windows. But something in this room that I absolutely love. These are the original carpenter locks and they still retain their maker's seal. Wonderful. It gives us hints to who made the pieces and parts of this house originally. Let's go over to what would have been the public parlor. Again, I'm standing in what would have been the public parlor, the receiving parlor for guests when they came to see Mary Shields when she first built this little farmhouse. We know it's the public parlor because this mantelpiece, which is also original, is more ornate. You would have used your more ornate elements in a public space. Again, beautiful 12 over 12 lights, but very simple finishes with original cypress flooring throughout the house. Let's take a look at the two bedrooms, the two additional rooms that would have been part of this original space. Here we are in what would have been probably a music room or a library, one or the other. Another gorgeous period mantelpiece that matches the family parlor in the front, so we know that this is original, but this is where we start to see some of the remodeling that occurred during its transitionary period from 1830 into the 1840s, 50s, and 60s. We still have our 12 over 12 light windows, but our corner pieces around our window surrounds have changed slightly in this room. And in the window behind the cameraman, we have a jib door that's been added. There was no gallery along this side of the home when it was first built. So that obviously would not have been a jib door. It didn't need to function as a jib door. But once they did the remodel in the 1840s, 50s, and 60s and added the beautiful Greek Revival portico to the front, we needed a jib door so we could access that porch for every space in the house. Now, one of the things I absolutely love about this room and the room that mirrors it are these 12 over 12 windows, which now look into another central hall and breezeway. Obviously, this would have originally been the back of the home, but now it looks into the second phase of the home structure. And I, I love that. And I also love the fact that once the hall was added, these windows could have been raised and they could have utilized those cross breezes from that central hall even into this older section of the home. So again, here we have our early 19th century, mid 19th century air conditioning. Let's take a look at the last room in the early part of the home. Another beautiful space in the original part of the home. You'll notice as in all architecture of this time, we have two rooms mirroring each other on either side of a central hall plan. We feel like this was the original bedroom for the home because it retains its original cupboards, which would have been used for storing garments, family items in the home. Now, could it have been a dining space and that could have been used for China? Absolutely, but it makes sense that this would have been a bedroom for the house. Again, beautiful windows behind me that look onto what is now a central breezeway hall that connects us to the next phase of construction. So now I'm gonna take you outside and show you the new front of the Cedars. Come with me. So here's some time for some more history lessons. We tend to think of the cotton kingdom and the wealth that was built by cotton as being a very long period of time and unfortunately being the main cause of enslavement of people in our country. However, during the 400 year period of enslavement in America, the rise of cotton in the cotton kingdom only lasted about 30 years. It was a very, very short period of time when you look at that entirety of the history of enslavement. But this particular structure gives us a fabulous picture of that blip in time. When people went from being relatively modestly wealthy farmers to being extraordinarily wealthy planters and plantation owners. 
So you saw the original front of the Cedars, simple farmhouse vernacular. Within 30 years, the owners had become very wealthy planters and they decided that their home needed to reflect that wealth. And so then they added this addition onto this beautiful home. And now we have a Greek revival, double portico with fluted Doric columns and the opulence and elegance that we tend to think of when we think of Greek revival architecture. My favorite element on the exterior of this home. It is something we hardly ever see. We've talked about Ashler block scoring in the past, where a home, they wanted to imitate that Greek revival neoclassical influence from Europe. This style started in Europe. This is really a European style that came over to the US. And so they did not have the stone to build these homes from, so they decided to score stucco. But in this house, we have something totally unique. This house is clad in wood. This is all wood siding that has been carved in a three-dimensional design to mimic ashlar block. Beautifully done over the entire exterior facade of both the bottom and the top galleries of this gorgeous home. You'll notice that every one of the windows is a jib window and we've transitioned from those 12 over 12 windows to six over six light windows, a slightly later period. So that helps us date the home as well. Come inside and let me show you the opulence that happened in this period of building. Welcome into the new formal receiving hall of the Cedars. Some things I want to point out to you in this room. The front door retains its original faux bois decoration, as do the pocket doors that are hiding in these walls. We now have incredible ornamentation with this plaster work, the plaster medallions that's mimicked in both the ladies' parlor and the gentlemen's parlor. Underneath, we have cypress floors that have been painted faux marble. Now, a lot of you are gonna scream about the floors being painted. This is a very typical and very historically appropriate application. Marble would have been, of course, the preferred material here in a grand home. But marble was not always accessible. It was not easy to get it here and it was very expensive. So artisans would come in and replicate the look by painting the floors. On our side lights, you'll also see beautiful etched glass. And then we have a cupboard on either side of the front door that's mimicked upstairs in the central hall as well. Come into this first parlor. Formal parlor, absolutely exquisite spaces, 15 foot ceilings, plaster medallions that are absolute works of art, plaster surround that matches the entryway. And then these moldings are also plaster. So your cornices are also plaster though in a more simple style. You'll note the six over six windows are jib doors. Again, anywhere that we can access the galleries, we're going to have jib doors. So those can be thrown open for easy indoor outdoor access. Something really special I wanna point out in this space. This home originally had two beautiful Carrera marble mantelpieces that were original to the new period of the home. This one was lost over time, but can you tell? You probably can't, can you? This is actually carved from wood and painted in faux marble to have the look of Carrera marble and to match perfectly the marble mantelpiece that still exists in the secondary parlor. So we'll show you that in a second. You'll notice that we have windows here. Why would we put windows here when this was never the original back of the home? Why do we have windows looking out into a hallway? Two reasons. First of all, during this period, symmetry, symmetry, symmetry. Symmetry was everything. So if we had it in one half of the house, we needed it in the second half of the house. The second thing is, it's going to let us utilize those breezes from that central hallway connecting the old portion and the new portion of the home. So once again, great airflow. Let's go into the secondary parlor where I can show you the original marble fireplace. So here we are in the secondary parlor, gentlemen's parlor, ladies' parlor, who knows? Because, there is no differentiation in the ornamentation of the two rooms. Generally speaking, in these homes, we have one that's more formal, one that's informal, we have one that's more masculine, one that's more feminine, but these two mirror each other identically. Jib doors, medallions, plaster work, and of course this time, we have an actual Carrera marble mantelpiece that is original to this period of the home. 
I love that we're starting to see a little bit of the Gothic influence coming in. Gothic Revival was just coming into its infant stage of popularity here in the United States while this portion of the home was being built. So we have just a hint of it here. Our door surrounds and window surrounds, you'll see true Greek Revival influences and they mirror all the way through the front space of this home. Let's go now to what is, I think, my favorite portion of the house, the hallway that is the transition between the original and the new. Come with me. Well, here we are, the space that was created to make two houses into one, the central hall. Now, I absolutely adore the fact that we have mirroring French doors with their original wavy glass on either end of this beautiful space with their original side lights. Even today, these doors could be thrown open. The airflow would be such that in, even in the hottest of summers, you would not necessarily need your air conditioner because you have the breezeway and the windows to open to allow for airflow. Let me show you the beautiful staircase that rises all three stories of the Cedars. This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, which is literally my favorite streaming service. You guys are going to be so happy when we tell you this. So Curiosity Stream, you know how you're always turning on your TV and there's nothing to watch, even if you have all the services. We've got all of the services the and services. there's still nothing to watch. Curiosity Stream, there is always something to watch. It has literally thousands of documentaries by some of the world's best documentary makers, as well as exclusive content that you could only get on Curiosity Stream. And I know you probably think I'm lying, but literally my, you can ask him my favorite thing to watch. Documentaries. documentaries. Absolutely. Curiosity Stream is the Netflix for the knowledgeable. It's the Hulu for history buffs. It's the Disney Plus for the scientists in us all. And you know what else I love about it? What? So one of the reasons that I refused to get it for so long was I was like, we cannot afford another streaming service. I know. Got Seriously. Cable. I know you're all out there going, I mean, how many more can you have? Right? I don't want to spend $15 more a month on another service. $15 a month adds up. Guess what? It's $20 a year. You spend more than that on the coffee that you buy every morning before you go to work. $20 a year. Can you believe that? No, I couldn't believe that. And even better news, if I they like use it. code restoration, that's all of us. Code restoration. Use restoration at checkout and you will only pay $14.99 for an entire year's subscription. That's a 25% discount for those of you who are bad at math. That's $1.25 per month. That's, that's nothing. nothing. That's 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 less than nothing. Come on. What's your favorite show on there? It's uh, The World's Greatest Houses. I love The History of Home. And it's a three-part series, actually. Each one is an hour long, and it's narrated by... Kevin's good friend. Nick Offerman. Parks and Recreation. From Parks and Rec. He thinks they're very good Oh, we're buddies. close. Or tight. tight, tight, tight friends. If you guys want to save 25% right now, go to curiositystream.com slash restoration. Make sure you use restoration at your checkout and you will save 25% and only spend $14.99 for an entire year. year. So not a month. It's a year. A month. Can I can I just say it again? A dollar twenty-five a month. Cheap. It's nothing. For you who are spending seven and a half dollars every morning for coffee. Okay. <laughs> Learning so it for a dollar twenty-five a month. You are welcome. Curiosity stream, new in your life. You're gonna love it. You're gonna thank us for it. Goodbye. Here we are in the second floor landing of the new portion of the home, you'll notice that the entryway onto the gallery mimics exactly the entryway onto the gallery on the first floor. Only this time, we don't have faux bois. We've left it with its original wood grain. Even our cupboards mirror what we have downstairs. So again, symmetry on the outside, symmetry on the inside. We still have our gorgeous Greek Revival architecture and our door surrounds and the surround of our beautiful entrance into the gallery. Up here, we have two bedrooms, so let's show you those. The first of the bedrooms has and this incredible mantelpiece that I wanted to show you. It is obviously original. While the family spent the money for real marble downstairs, they wanted the look of marble upstairs 
They didn't wanna spend the money for such an extravagance in a private space. So again, we have faux marbre, which is original to this space. Note again, jib doors that access the galleries. And this door, which now goes into an ensuite bath, would have accessed a back gallery, but that back gallery here has now been enclosed to accommodate 21st century living in a 19th century home. But on hot summer days, these doors could have been thrown open and the owners could have had ingress and egress to their second floor gallery and lots of fresh cool air blowing in. How about a look at the second bedroom? Another space that almost identically mirrors the one across the hall. Simple ornamentation in this room, but still beautiful Greek Revival touches throughout, jib doors, and a gorgeous Greek Revival mantelpiece. Upstairs on the third floor, we have what would have been quarters for the enslaved house servants. So we're gonna take you up there and show you those spaces now. This beautiful property is loaded with extra amenities. There's a four-sided infinity pool. A pool house. With a beautiful modern kitchen. The grounds feature a pond, a lake, two greenhouses, an original school building, and immaculate landscaping. Well, we wanted to say goodbye to you here on this second floor gallery because really, if we could afford a house like this, this is where I would spend all of my time. But look at these beautiful details mimicked here on the second floor gallery, just like on the first floor. Fluted Doric columns, an incredible fluted Doric entryway into that second floor landing, original jib doors across the front, and more incredible ashlar block carving over the entire facade. Can you imagine the craftsmanship and artistry it took to create this beautifully symmetric pattern just for looks on the front of this home? We hope you've enjoyed this tour here at the Cedars. This home is available for sale. We're going to be putting the link below in the description and the contact information for the realtor. And if you think you're the next caretaker for the Cedars, it can be yours for $2.995 million. That this home, along with its 40 plus acres, I think is a steal. I do wanna ask you one favor though. If I said something a little off, you hear a little flub, show me a little grace, I get one shot, one chance to run through this. What you're seeing is me speaking extemporaneously, one run through, we don't have a lot of time. We love you, we hope you love us. We'll see you next time on Preservation Travels.